All right, how y'all doing? Now, a little thing came up in my local gun shop, and a buddy of mine where I get most of my ammunition and guns from asked me to, to help debate this one thing about dry firing a 22 or any rim fire. And I'm like, everybody knows you don't dry fire a rim fire. And there's a, for, for a couple reasons. Now, I just, I, the problem is I got rid of the other firing pin and I bought this used firing pin. This is like the third time I had to fix one of these old Remingtons. Let's see if we can get a view of the firing pin there. More, almost positive you guys can see that. Yeah, see it? Now, this used one, had, you could definitely tell was dry fired into steel. Let's talk about the rim fire here. Here's a spent shell. I just made sure that this used one would work. Let's see that spent shell. See how it hits the side of the casing there? And it bulges it down there. Now, I'm going to try to shine a flashlight. This one doesn't seem that bad, but if you keep dry firing it, what happens is a piece of metal, which is very thin, hits a flat piece of steel, which is designed not to hit. It's designed to hit brass. Now, the reason I'm going to show this one because I get this firing pin out pretty easy. There it is. The bitch put back together, but there you go. <laughs> I love these Remingtons. Let's see if I can get the zoom. I mean, at least focus for you. There you go. That is designed to hit. You can see, look, it looked like the guy that sold it to me might have grinded it down a little bit to make it more sharp. But you see. That thing should be sharper than what it is. I watched a video of a guy with a brand new Savage 22, I think it was, or Volt Action. And, and he kept, to prove a point, him and his big old funky earrings, to prove a point, he kept pulling the bolt back and dry firing the firing pin up against the steel. Why would you do that? What, what, what? Now, like this firearm here, the problem with this one, this doesn't have a stay open. So it happens every once in a while and you can find these firing pins around. And Remington actually fixed the problem by making it a little longer so it lasts a little longer. But still, why would you dry fire a brand new gun? Just to say you can do it and then try to sell it to somebody else. <sighs> but anyhow, I'm gonna put this thing back together. It's gonna to shoot now. This is the third Remington <laughs> I had to replace the firing pin on only because it's been dry fired. And this one doesn't stay open and that's what happens. I mean, it's old. I mean, this thing's, I think this thing was made in the thirties. But uh, I'm so good at fixing these things, People say, hey, you fixed my buddies. Can you fix this one? Well, there we are. <laughs> All right. Let's recap. <clears throat> the firing bin is designed to hit that and fire. If you blunt the tip of your firing pin, because this is not a firing pin, it's not a uh, it's not like a center fire. It's got to hit the middle and always hits brass. If you blunt the tip by this thing hitting steel, you know, right here at the barrel, you're going to have to replace the firing pin. The worst thing that can happen if you destroy your chamber and you keep and this, this metal keeps hitting, keeps hitting, keep hitting. And then what happens is your rim doesn't sit in far enough to take the strike. I, I probably destroyed one of these already because it wasn't shooting no more. It would shoot like every, it would shoot a lot, but like every five uh, shots, it would stop shooting and had nothing to do with the ammo. The problem is they dry fired so much, there was a mark right there in the chamber 
then the rim wouldn't seat tight enough for this hammer to do what it's supposed to do. All right, too long of a video. But anyhow, do not dry fire rim fires. There are certain ones you can. I would say the, the best thing to say is uh, never dry fire rim fire for, for this reason. This is the fourth one I fixed or third. Who knows? God bless. Bye.